Oh, crazy wonderful humans. Um, I wanted to pop on and do a video about twin flames. <coughs> Excuse me, of course my voice decides to go as soon as I come on live. Um, and the reason I wanted to pop on was I saw this post yesterday and if anybody saw it in my stories, oh my God, my voice is gone. <coughs> Interesting. I always pay attention to the energy in your throat when it goes. Um, and the post was basically piss taken the whole twin flame thing. And it was actually a really good post. It was really funny. It's in my stories still if you want to have a look at it. Um, but I put up a little bit of information about it and I got a couple of messages um, from various different people just querying it, commenting on it, saying, telling me their own experiences of it. Um, and I just found it really interesting. It was really cool to get a little bit of interaction um, about the post. And I wanted to share my own experience of this because I used to totally buy into the idea of twin flame. I'm not saying that I don't now, but I'm much more um, careful about how I approach it, if, you, if this will make sense shortly. So my own personal experience of the twin flame thing, I had never heard about it, if I'm really honest with you, until I had been traveling and I came back from traveling and I had met uh, a guy. I'll give you a little tiny bit of a backstory. Hey, Mickey Hayden. I'll give you a tiny bit of a backstory. So basically, like shit hit the fan back in like 2016, 2017. I ended up going traveling and I had just broken up with somebody and I actually emailed around to lots of different um, travel agents around the world, basically getting prices for around the world trips, right? And I ended up chatting with this guy over in the UK and kind of accidentally ended up really clicking with him because I had gone off, uh, I planned to go to ayahuasca in the jungle in Peru and he had been off doing ayahuasca as well. So we kind of automatically had this rapport. Ayahuasca back then wasn't something that everybody was talking about or doing. It wasn't really a pop cultural thing that people were doing. Ayahuasca was around but it wasn't a big pop cultural thing so i had been i had planned to go to peru he had already done it so we had connected over this very long-winded story short he was my travel agent and he helped me to plan all my trips and travel around the world right and the connection with him was incredible like crazy crazy deep very very quickly and we fell for each, each other very quickly and when i was in peru um, after I, can't, I was there for about a month, so I had been a couple of ceremonies in. I basically, I promise you, I'll get to the point. This is part of the twin flame thing, okay? So basically, um, one night after one of my ceremonies, I was lying back in my hut and I literally had this vision of this guy, Matt was his name. Um, I could see him in his office with his, and I had never met this guy. I had heard his voice over a phone and all of my correspondence with him was via email, setting up my flights for travel, right? So bear that in mind. So I had um, this vision, I could see him in his workplace and he basically was packing everything up and he was telling his work colleagues, I'm heading off on my holidays now, I'll see you, you know, in a couple of weeks. And they were like, oh, so where are you going? He was like, I'm going to Malaysia to meet Deborah for a three week holiday. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I'm lying back having this weird daydream slash dream, but I'm totally conscious and awake, but I'm still in the medicine. And I was like, okay, I don't know this guy. I only know him from email correspondence. The first time I spoke with him over the phone, like it did something to me. I was like, oh my God, this is really inconvenient. I was engaged to get married. All that went shit. And I was like, I'm not ready for meeting anybody yet. Um, and yet his voice, the very first time I spoke with him, I was like, oh my God, this is just, this is weird. It's doing something to me. Anyway, so fast forward, I kind of was in Peru. I came back to Ireland on a stopover and I was heading off to Australia and I was in contact with him. And we decided to do a Skype call because we were like, okay, uh, let's compare ayahuasca vomiting and diarrhea stories. I know it's really, really gross. Anybody who's done ayahuasca will get this. If you've done ayahuasca, let me know in the comments below. Um, so basically came back to Ireland, did a Skype call. We spoke for hours. It was really weird, spoke for hours. And then I headed off to Australia and um, 
we had more connection on the way i basically decided i was like do you know what? i have i'm not going to get into a relationship with this guy but i feel like i just need to be transparent with him and i sent him a long email and i was like look it's totally cool if you're not into me but i just want to let you know that i feel there's an attraction there and i don't want this to be weird and i don't want it to be strange and i don't want it to change anything i just feel like i need to say it and i don't know why i need to say it i just do and that was grand so halfway through my trip from Ireland to Australia, I got an email back and uh, the email was like, that's insane. Cause actually, yeah, I'm into you too. And I was like, oh my God, I was like a happy clappy little, uh, little child. I uh, got to Australia, lost my bags. And um, literally I'd say it must have been within about 24 hours. He basically called me while I was in Australia on my mobile and was like, I know this is going to sound really weird and I know that we don't know each other. And he was like, I have to book holidays anyway. How about I come out and meet you in Malaysia for three weeks? And I was like, oh, I was like, what? This is insane. Like, and I told him then about my vision when I was in um, Peru working with ayahuasca. And um, yeah, it was nuts. It was insane. And he was like, yeah, I knew there was something strange about this. Fast forward again, uh, I did a bit more travel. I basically said to him, look, I'm traveling. I've just finished getting out of an engagement. I am not looking to be in a relationship at all. In fact, I need to go like spread my wings and just be single for a while. And he was like, cool, that's totally fine. And anyway, so we met up in Malaysia. It was a bit of a bumpy trip and we had an amazing time, but we also batted heads a bit. There was a lot of growth, a lot of growth. And it was really, um obvious very very early on in that relationship that we were mirroring back to each other this is where the soul the twin flamey kind of thing comes in i'll explain it later once i kind of give you this part first um we it was very clear early on that we had this freaking insane chemistry like full on really really intense deep chemistry that i never ever had with anybody else and we had this weird, totally psychic bond. I didn't, wasn't even thinking psychic stuff back then, but it was very like, we would we would say the same things. We would be thinking the same things. And it was just really, really immediate. We had this really, really immediate connection and a very strong physical, emotional, spiritual, mental connection. Um, we we're also just two normal people, right? So, um yeah so there was a lot of triggering each other's wounds by mirroring back to each other um those wounds and it was very unintentional and it, a lot of this was happening because we were so similar and also so dissimilar but um that mirroring back was causing wounds to be triggered to be brought up in order to be healed so it was a very very it was a very beautiful journey but it was also very uncomfortable and it was also very emotional and stressful at times as well and um I, personally i found it really like i had been on this like okay i'm like calm like a zen buddha and then when i met him it was just turbulent all over the place so yeah that kind of toxic also very healthy dynamic it was weird um we almost went our own separate ways at one point because it was just so intense and anyway very long story short he was leaving to go and i was staying to go on my travels around the rest of the world and um it was horrendous it was really really horrendous saying goodbye to each other uh fast forward months and months and months later we ended up meeting up again in guatemala we ended up climbing a volcano together we almost died but and um, we almost got hit by lava bombs <laughs> I'd had a vision about that the night before as well. I wouldn't have even considered myself psychic at all back then. But the night before we were climbing the volcano, it was um, Acatenango and Fuego uh, in Guatemala for anybody who's interested. Hey, Gem, how you doing? Um, uh, Gem, you'll like this. We're talking about twin flames. Stay tuned. Um, so we were climbing Acatenango and uh, Fuego is the one that erupts. If you don't know about this, check it out on YouTube. It's freaking amazing. It's literally like a live active volcano that spews out lava. It's just insane. So we were climbing up it and the night before I'd had this crazy dream. I was like, oh my God, like that's, I had a dream that we're going to, um, that it's going to erupt and all the rest of it. It did, right? And we were literally, we had lava bombs like pew, pew, pew overhead. It was like a movie. It was cool. 
terrifying but cool and again fast forward i'm trying to speed through the whole thing there's like a three-part book series and this is book number three for anybody who's interested in reading this um so check out coming home to me part three this is all in it but read the whole series because it will make sense so fast forward again was in scotland fast forward again came home and we ended up living together hey louise how you doing and when we came home and when we were living together um again it was very beautiful but also really turbulent we were triggering the shit out of each other but we also had this crazy, crazy, crazy deep relationship and deep connection. So I was staying in the relationship because I'd never had that connection ever before. And I, I was staying in the relationship because I'd never had that depth. Like we would look, we would like, we'd so often like just look into each other's eyes and say nothing. That sounds so corny and I know like vomit, like just if you wanna vomit do. But like we would look into each other's eyes and say nothing and get so lost looking in each other's eyes that you could literally, it was like you could see each other's soul. It was just beyond ridiculous and insane. And yet he was smoking weed, he was playing video games, um, emotionally was quite unavailable and um, incredibly loving person and I absolutely adored his soul um but had a lot of baggage and I'm sure it, it, you know if the uh, mirror was turned back he'd probably say she was just fucking high maintenance emotional moody and hard to figure out like it you know what I mean I would imagine that's probably why he'd say it as well and probably very demanding and uh I don't know like I would have definitely been much more codependenty so this is where we start getting into the twin flame dynamic when we look at twin flames versus codependent and narcissistic relationships or that kind of energy, I feel initially I was like, oh my God, we're twin flames. Because when I came home from traveling, a friend of mine was like, oh my God, you're a twin flame. And I was like, what the fuck is a twin flame? And I looked it up and I was like, mm, well, that kind of, you know, answers it. So when I looked up twin flame, the research I had done was twin flames, when they meet, they get like literally it's like gravitational pull um towards each other magnetically connected with each other so they fall very quickly now pay attention to some of the things i'm saying because it's going to come up again when i start talking about codependency narcissism all these kind of different things and um, so the first thing is that they fall very quickly very magnetically head over heels for each other the second part is that they um they have a lot of shared background. They have a lot of common things that are a bit weird and like, oh, you're doing that, you're doing that. So there will be history that will be very similar between the two of you. There will be this unspoken psychic bond that that there's a depth and a, a psychic bond where you nearly finish each other's sentences or when you're not around each other, you can feel each other or you can nearly sense what each other is doing. Um, This is all the twin flame dynamic, okay? And then what else? So then the other thing with the twin flame dynamic is it's hard to be with them and it's hard to be without them. Codependent narcissism or codependency specifically anyway. Um, and so there is so they're drawn to each other. They trigger each other. They mirror back to each other, each other's wounds. So they have a tendency to trigger each other's wounds as uh, the purpose for that is to grow and heal and evolve. So. The idea of twin flame is that you're one and the same. You actually came from the same energetic flame as such. And it's like part of yourself split in two, right? It's not soulmate. It's that you're one and the same. And so the idea is that as a twin flame, you're separated in some lifetime at one point, And then you spend lifetimes searching for each other. And quite often you'll come together join and it won't work and you'll go your own separate ways you'll come back together join you'll go your own separate ways and you'll keep doing this push and pull dynamic until in one lifetime you'll finally come together join and merge and become one flame again and the push and pull of the twin flame is like can be like um you know this person hasn't done the work and this person has and it's like this chasing pulling pushing chasing kind of energy right so 
essentially what's happening is but so this is the thing like it's the push and pull now if you look at a if you look at the codependency side of things there's this push and pull as well and especially codependent narcissistic relationships not everybody's a narcissist i do kind of feel like most of us have a bit of narcissism in us i think to some extent i think that we all do Nar narcissistic personality is a whole different ball game by itself and the word narcissism is massively bandied about and used and misused a lot in our modern cultural society. I'm one of those people who totally misuses it as a way of describing things. And I shouldn't, but I do. And um, so we're so what I'm talking about is in in a toxic, let's call it a toxic relationship, right? There is this push and pull. A narcissistic relationship tends to be where somebody falls into it very quickly. Like narcissists don't want to wait around for you to have any time to actually think. They want to move at lightning quick speed, get into a relationship so you don't have actually got so you don't have time to think about anything. There is very much this like falling in love. Um, they're going to be everything that you want them to be because they want you to fall in love with them. They're, these people are tremendously, um, what's the word? They're in pain, right? And they don't realize it. It's a subconscious thing that's going on. Doesn't mean we need to pity or do any of that stuff. My point is, is that there is a game that's going on. And the game is to make you fall in love with them very quickly. Don't have time to think about it. And basically like, so the whole thing is very like a whirlwind. This whirlwind romance where you're up in the air, it's all very addictive, right? And then you fall in love with each other the masks begin to slip and everybody starts to see who everybody is and then it's it doesn't work it's not uh it's not something that you can kind of um gem no problem um it's not something that you can uh plan basically because both your masks have kind of come down and so what tends to happen then is the narcissist can't keep up that facade it drops and the codependency can't keep up or it has this like idealized, romanticized image of how it's supposed to be that's projected onto the narcissist. Narcissist is not going to play the game anymore, drops that, they get disillusioned, and then they're like, what the fuck is going on here? Um, and then the whole thing starts to unravel and crumble. Now what happens is the codependent is like, oh my God, they don't love me anymore. Narcissistic goes, let me out of here because I don't like that pulley draggy energy. The um then the codependent goes oh i'm being rejected i'm gonna go run this way and the narcissist goes oh you're running away from me i need to get you back and then you're kind of pulled back into relationship again and this push pull thing happens over and over again so the codependent becomes codependent the narcissist pulls away the narcissist senses that the codependent is now running away and, it, and basically hoovers back up the codependent to come back in that's the very basic gist I am not an expert on this. This is my own research and my own understanding of it. I'm sure there's a million people who would like to correct me, but this is the basis of what I have come to understand. So what I started to see was, and as I said in my book, Coming Home to Me, part three, I actually finish part of the book talking about the twin flame thing. I have to admit, if I write book four, which someday I will, I will be changing and reviewing that based on my own experiences because when I started to do my own healing journey around relationship dynamics, looking at the masculine and feminine, looking at relationships and what a healthy relationship actually is, which most of us actually haven't had good role models for what a healthy relationship is. And therefore we go around repeating what we understand as a relationship, but actually it's quite toxic, toxic and not, not very healthy. Um, what I began to understand was First of all, there's a book by Pia Melody, I think it is, and it's called, uh, I think it's Love Addiction or something like that. I can't remember. And I definitely was like, oh, that's, I could see a lot of myself in there. There was a lot of codependency. There was a lot of like love addiction type stuff going on. And when I started to see it, I was like, oh my God, yeah, I totally can understand that. Then I started to look at um, the twin flame thing and I was like, wait a minute. This twin flame thing sounds like remarkably like the codependent relationship, the codependent narcissistic relationship, even more so, but definitely the codependent relationship. So are, are like two, basically two unhealed people who are like triggering each other. And in all honesty, as much as I absolutely totally felt like uh, Matt was my twin flame, I also am abundantly aware that it was just also quite a toxic relationship 
like don't get me wrong i feel like definitely met a soulmate 100 percent met a soulmate i 100 percent met somebody who came into my life as a soul contract to trigger the shit out of me so that i would do the growth and evolve and become a more conscious being and i feel like i was definitely a karmic contract for him also to trigger the shit out of him to help him to do his wound healing and be able to consciously evolve and become um a more awakened soul as well so what a beautiful contract to have made coming into this world to basically trigger the shit out of each other so that you both evolve and grow like i think that that's beautiful but it's also very painful and in my life i just feel what i became aware of was that that wasn't a healthy relationship to be in both of us weren't actually um fully healed enough to be in that relationship now when you look at twin flame that's what they're saying as well they're saying like oh you know you come together and you bounce off and come together and bounce off and that's the whole twin flame thing what i find quite interesting um and again don't shoot me for for saying it this is my own experience and my own opinion why is it that, right pop culture makes things pop uh, popular right that's what pop culture does pop culture sees something everybody wants to do it and now it's a pop popular thing right and i feel personally what's happened with the twin flame thing has been that it became this beautiful romanticized idea um because we've grown up with fucking disney should be shot right they should like lit for a lot of other reasons they should be but anyway i won't go into that but disney literally like grew us up falling into like idealized romances hollywood has manipulated uh us into an idealized ways to what what way love is supposed to be and because we haven't had healthy role models in our life we've begun to use celebrity relationships which is a really bad idea as an idealized way of being in relationship we've started to use like what we see in movies and in books and tv as a way to model our lives and it's not our it it's it is our fault and it's not our fault it's not our fault because it is automated programming that we've been brought up with it is our fault if we don't start to take responsibility for looking at that and stepping out of it to look at what's actually happening right that's my my take on it um but i do feel that we have this romanticized view of of love and if we're in a toxic relationship because it feels good right if you look up as i think it's pia melody if you look up love addiction um it feels compulsive it feels deep and like intense and quick and it's literally like an addiction and yet if you look at the twin flame thing there's a bit of an addiction thing going on there as well and so what i'm asking people to do is rather than jumping into like out of you know out of nowhere everybody suddenly meeting their twin flame in this lifetime if twin flame is a real thing the whole thing with twin flame is that you spend you could spend lifetimes searching for each other you could spend lifetimes getting together it not working and then breaking up and um the idea is that you finally come together it's not that you have lifetimes where you come together and it's magic it's that you meet you come together it's toxic af and then you go your own separate ways and then in another lifetime you might come back and because you've healed and done your journey yourself individually you've gone off and done your healing then in you know the next lifetime you meet each other you're together and it's you know you're back as one but is it not weird that all of a sudden in this lifetime everybody's meeting their twin flame and everybody's uniting with their twin flame i don't know i would question that i'm not saying it's not possible i'm not questioning those who feel like they have and by the way anybody who feels like you have a twin flame relationship anything that i'm saying to you if you're feeling triggered and defensive and protective about what i'm saying there's gold behind that if you're feeling triggered and angered and annoyed that somebody's taking the uh, illusion away or taking the dream away and discrediting how you feel in your relationship i would ask you to go into that feeling and feel into it because when we're frustrated and when we're angry about something 
it's usually because we're defending something. And if we're defending something, it means that we feel like we have to defend it, which if this was something that was natural for you, and if this is something that you, without question, without doubt, feel that in your body, mind and soul, that you're with your twin flame and you've reunited and it's hunky-dory and it's amazing and peaceful, if that's the case, then you wouldn't have anything to defend. It would just be a solid knowing of, yeah, I don't have to defend that because I just know. But if you're feeling triggered, I would say to you to do some um, deep diving and exploring around the idea of looking at, and this is just exploration. Exploration is there to expand your mind and awareness for you to be able to feel out what is true and not true for you. Um, but I would definitely recommend to reading a few books like Codependency No More. Uh, gonna forget all of them. I think Robin Norwood's book is Why Women Love Too Much. It's an amazing book. So Robin Norwood, Why Women Love Too Much or Women Who Love Too Much. Uh, Pia Melody, Codependency No More. And I can't honestly think of some of the rest of them. There's tons of books out there. But there too, I definitely recommend to read. And what it's going to show you is um where you're at and if what you're in is a codependent relationship or whether it is a twin flame relationship maybe it is maybe you're one lucky ones that in this lifetime you get to meet your twin and you get to spend happily ever after but what i'm questioning is we have a pop cultural movement where people are staying in toxic relationships because they believe that there's a possibility that they're the one if it's a true twin flame, you're actually meant to honor yourself first and foremost, and it will happen if it's meant to, regardless of what your actions are. So if you're in a toxic relationship and you leave, there shouldn't be fear around, well, if this is my twin flame, I can't leave. My understanding of twin flame is regardless of whether you leave or not if it's meant to be it's going to happen but it's going to happen when you're both healed not when you're in that toxic environment um, and I'm saying this from somebody who it took me it took me a long time to end that relationship um, that I was talking about earlier on because I had it in my head that we were a twin flame relationship and I didn't want to mess it up by leaving or hurting or um and I didn't want to waste time I was like but maybe we can work this out together so I was hooked on the fantasy and the idea that maybe we were a twin flame relationship now in hindsight looking back I would tell myself yeah but if you're in a twin flame relationship and you leave th and then it, and nothing happens then it's not meant to be but I would also tell myself that if I, if you're in a twin flame relationship and you leave and the other person tries to hoover you up then that's a narcissistic relationship. So the other books that I would ask you to read would be books or look up even, there's a guy on YouTube and I cannot remember his name. I can put the link if anybody's interested, I can send you the link. And he's actually a recovering narcissist, which is really interesting because he gives you the inside scoop on what it's like to be a narcissist. And he's basically been in therapy for years and he created this YouTube channel to be able to explain to people what narcissism is actually and how it looks and what it is they're doing and the function and whatever. So the other thing I would beg you to do is as personal growth, as curiosity, is to read about what is narcissism. And I'm not saying that we go around labeling people as narcissists, but what I'm saying is that there are actions and there are um, like red flags that you can be aware of as part of maybe a personality of somebody that you've been with. It doesn't mean they have narcissism, but they could have these toxic traits. And they, they, it doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means not to be in your life, right? You need to do your growing and your healing. So I know there's a good few of you watching. So if any of you guys have any questions while I'm here, um, I'm happy to answer any questions from my own perspective and experience. As I said, I'm not a, I'm not a twin flame specialist. I'm not a relationship expert. But I've done my own homework and I've done my own healing around me. So all I can do is share that. But if you have any questions, let me know while we're still here. Um, and it can take a minute for that to come in. So in the meantime, what I will say is just be aware that there is a toxic um, pop cultural movement to romanticize the idea of twin flames. And with that, we need to take responsibility over what is idealism, romanticism 
and rose tinted glasses and what is um being dressed up perhaps um it might be dressed up as codependency and narcissistic um type traits in somebody or in your relationship and that's a whole other video that i could go into uh, which is really interesting narcissism as a topic by itself is actually fascinating um, and I guarantee you've probably seen it in your life all around the place. It's just really, really fascinating. Um, but what this does is it gives you back the power. Because if you're in a relationship that's in a constant push and pull, as an empath, as a highly sensitive person, as somebody who um, used to really struggle with trusting myself, who used to really struggle with trusting my own inner wisdom, as somebody who would struggle to know what my yes and no was in a relationship i made so many excuses for to stay in that relationship based on yeah but we're supposed to be twin flame and if we're not twin flame the other thing i was staying in was like we're soulmates and like yeah i, I still believe we're soulmates but i don't believe that we're soulmates that are meant to be together still um because there's so many things about that relationship that wasn't working. And it's sad, it's so sad to have that really intense, magnetic, sexual, physical, emotional, spiritual connection with somebody and yet not be allowed as such to be in that relationship for the rest of your life because all the other parts and components in the external world outside of that were not adding up as something that I wanted to have in my life. Um, like I remember us being together like we were sleeping with each other one night we were having sex and I remember literally being like oh my god this is literally like I'm like making love to myself and I didn't say anything and then the next morning he said wasn't it really weird he goes last night I literally felt like I was having sex with myself and I was like oh my god that's so insane I was like that's exactly what happened to me so there was so many synchronicities in that relationship that I was like there's no way I can give that up. Like, how could I end a relationship with somebody who, when I look into their eyes, literally, it's like I can see their soul. Um, or how can I end a relationship where we have such intuition and such um, psychic connection? How can I end a relationship that when we're not in the same room, we can be thinking the same thing? How can I end a relationship with somebody who I have so much in common with and I feel that energetic rapport with? How can I let that go and not be in a relationship with that? It's, it's easy in terms of adding up what self-respect is and like knowing that I'm worth more than being with somebody who's stoned off as taught every night or somebody who's going to like play video games compulsively for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours on end. Somebody who is not emotionally available, somebody who is um, harsh and blunt with his delivery of the way he would say certain things to me and like, these are not bad things about him. These are just things that we weren't able to rectify in our relationship. Um, you know, even down to things like, you know, family and friends and um, some of the issues around that as well. They're not things that I would have maybe in, the, in hindsight that I maybe specifically choose to have in my life. My point is you can have a magnetic relationship with somebody and them not be the person that you need to spend the rest of your life with. And that doesn't mean that you're throwing away an opportunity. It means that you're respecting yourself. And it means that you're not falling into the twin flame uh, soup, but you're being a responsible adult and saying, how do I feel in this relationship? Okay, well, like 80% of the time, I feel not heard, not understood. And um, I don't feel emotionally connected. Okay, but the rest of the time I feel this magnetism, this energy, the psychic connection and this feeling like we're one and that like we are soulmates. But which is more functional as a human in a human experience? I need somebody who is not necessarily all those things that would be epic and maybe someday it'll happen. Um, but I need to look at my life and I need to look at like, what do I want in my life? 
And so having a partner who was stoned all the time is not something I wanted in my life. And it would affect, and actually him being stoned all the time was affecting our sexual relationship as well. It was affecting our emotional con connection to each other. It was leading to porn addiction as, you know, my God, you know, that's something that keeps coming into my world in terms of partners. But that was something that was happening as well because he wasn't emotionally available. He was escaping through all these other means. And this is, this guy was a really, really good guy, um, but just not what I need in terms of a relationship. So look, I can go on rant for hours because we all know I can talk. <laughs> but I just wanted to bring it up because when I saw the twin flame thing, I was like, yeah, that's something I need to talk about. And I really, really, really encourage anybody who feels like you're in a twin flame relationship. You won't want to do this, right? Because me being in that same situation, I didn't want anybody telling me that I wasn't in a twin flame relationship. I was like, oh no, I know we kill each other, but it's, it's amazing. Like, yeah, no, I didn't want anybody telling me that. So don't have anybody telling you that, but make your own choice to go off and be curious and do that research on codependency and narcissism. You don't need to go around labeling people. You don't need to go around labeling yourself. All you're doing is being curious about the energy surrounding these topics to see, can you see this in your life? Are these traits, patterns and things that you could break? Um, and there's something else I wanted to say before I go as well. What was that? I don't know what it was. It will come back if it's important. But last but not least, this is something that you can um heal i hate to say heal from because it sounds like you can heal from it that's not what i mean i honestly felt lost in the quagmire of relationship goop because it was a bit like i don't know if any of you guys have ever brought ever bought wallpaper when you see a pattern on the wallpaper here you're like oh that's amazing and then you bring it home and you put it up on the wall and you go that is horrendous and it's a bit like the wood from the trees, right? Sometimes you need to step away from something to be able to look at it more clearly. And if you feel for any reason that you're not able to step away from this to think clearly, that's another thing I would question because that could be a slight addiction, you know, the love addiction side of things as well, a fear of stepping away. I really do believe if, if something is meant for you, it won't pass you by. Um, so that was a quick, that was a quick live, wasn't it? <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. There's so many of you. I feel I feel humbled, honored and privileged to have your attention. Um let me know. I would absolutely really love to know in the comments below if you're happy to share because I think if you can share you're going to be there's other people going to feel really relieved that they're not alone. But if not, send me a message privately because I understand it can be a private thing as well. I'd love to know have you had experience of the twin flame thing? Have you had experience of the codependent narcissistic relationship? Um, can you see the can you see the dynamic which can be overlaid and which is very very similar dangerously similar um is it something you're stuck in is it something that you need help in um let me know how that goes and let me know if you have any feedback let me know if you have any questions um i absolutely adore making videos based on people's questions which is why i did this video today because i had a couple of people asking me about it so yeah let me know if you also like this please hit the like button when i when i share this uh, when we're finished with the live hit the like button because it helps this video to reach more people and um, do share it with anybody that you feel might be struggling with the twin flame dynamic and they're not really sure and they're perhaps in a toxic relationship and you want to help them um i think more people need to realize that there is an overlap between these energies um one last book, sorry, one last book recommendation. There's a guy called David Dada and he's got a book called Intimate Communion. And anybody who is interested in relationships, I love the, the topic of relationships. But when I started researching it, I wasn't looking at it from a modern pop cultural society view on relationships because that's just people's perspectives. I'm a Virgo son. Everything for me, I feel personally, your answers are in nature. Nature, if you look at nature, nature is, it can't be tampered by man, as in the natural rhythms and cycles of nature. Man can't really mess about with a huge amount. 
So if you ever want answers to something, look at what nature does naturally for your answers. And so when I started researching relationships, I started researching masculine and feminine energy, masculine and feminine polarity. And I started looking at it in nature and how that works and then in humans, how that works. And if you want to know how a relationship should work, look at masculine and feminine polarities. Don't necessarily be looking at all the relationship stuff. Look at the polarities and the energy because that is natural. Um, so that book, David Data, Intimate Communion, is amazing for that. If you can read it, it's just absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go because I could keep talking forever and we all have lives to leave. <laughs> so thank you all for joining me. Um, and I shall see you probably Monday, unless I decide to pop on lastminute.com. But I'll be around on Monday for more meditation and musings. Um, I'm thinking about starting Wednesday sessions for like Wednesday healing sessions for anybody who's interested. Let me know. Um, there'll be kind of group healing sessions. And yeah, that's all for the moment. So take care of yourself, guys. Thanks for popping on and I shall talk to you soon. Bye.